All right, welcome back, everybody. Next episode of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We are starting the Kent storyline, and what that means is we are doing all of the side stuff, and I guess that starts with the raid. So, uh, let's get at it. Okay, and we are on our way to Basin right now, but we gotta do all this fun stuff first. Who are these guys? Let's see. Huh? Wait, is there like just a little slot that I can hit? And that's why? I think there was. Oh, that's weird. Oh, I don't have any arrows left. Damn. Um, guys, how do we get in here? We have to go this way? Might. That might be why I ran this way. that bro I don't like that what was what in the world the fire breather We're done here. Come on. Your quest this is what's up top I was gonna say where is it my ripping okay so Really? That's that's the route you went, Avor. Come on, my man. You. Uh, what are you doing, bro? I think we have that one already. And I feel like we also should go hit this and then we go up. And then we can swoop back down. I think that is our our game plan here. Alright, cool. Mm -hmm. Gotta get out of here. There's a way out over here. I like that better. A much better. Mm -hmm. That Eivor, what are you doing, my man? Big boar. <laughs> wow, you tripping. Snakes. That is up above, and it doesn't look like. I can 
really get them. I'm gonna have to shoot that from a different angle. Looks like outside. Or up here. Of course you're. Why wouldn't you be in here? There we go. Okay. That's done. Let's go hit this piece of wealth. Then we'll backtrack and go back around. We should be able to make it to main story mission at some point. Unless a lot of side stuff comes up, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? This looks like a strong if I've ever seen. I know it's a bridge, but why is it well here? Yeah, okay. Hello. Well, that went well for you, huh? Yep. <laughs> he planted his flag. I planted his flag. Love that. This looks like the spot. Wait, what? I keep running into stuff and it's just not. What do you mean? There we go. I like it. Okay, that one. Did we unlock anything else? Oh, we did. There's a couple other things that are also close, but those are in different areas, so it might as well not be them yet. This doesn't count as a dock, huh? Kinda lame. I don't like the cloak up. Go do this mystery. Follow up with the next mystery. Actually, yeah, well, there's an artifact and then a mystery over there. But this one first for sure. Regardless. Away, curse tusks! Return to the beastmaster and tell him I will not fall to the trap of your devil's hand. Place in the doors is just nuts. I have no idea what this guy said, by the way. Dead from fear or something else. He fulfilled his own prophecy. The nature took its revenge. These are the uh, ramblings of a madman. But the animals, I cannot deny they tormented him. Uh, the Beastmaster. He lives among the animals, more beast than man. He commands all creatures, from the lowly mouse to the fearsome bear. They do his bidding, heinous and cruel. He claims to be nature's protector, but I see him with blood in his teeth, feral and wild like the wolf, and now he has cursed me. Cursed me for my terrible crime. Armor? And that stench. Rubbish and rotting food. In his fear, he barricaded himself inside. Little wonder the rats came. He was terrified. Believed himself cursed after killing a she-wolf and her cub. I'm doomed. While I was hunting, I came upon a she-wolf and her cubs barely older than one setting of the sun. Bared her teeth at me, and though I wanted to flee and leave the mother in peace, she chased me through the trees. I'm ashamed to say I struck her a deathly blow. I did not want them to die, but what could I do? I think the Beastmaster saw my deed, and now he has placed a terrible curse on me. The boars bellow outside my door. The rats scramble or scrabble in the walls. One will get me. That's fucked enough.
Hello, friends. Wait, what? On to the next one. I right, see you. One first. Ow. Wolves, wolves, wolves. Up there. I like that. Just let me climb. I love it. Miss a parkour, it's over. <laughs> so I feel like you're supposed to move. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, well. Jump off, because... That's a normal height a human can withstand when they fall. Ignore my words at your peril. I think there's... I'm here, old man. Tell me your tale. Three young men came to me not long ago. Braggarts, full of drink and sin. Death had claimed a friend of theirs. So they set out to find Death and teach him a lesson. That is foolish. We Norse do not seek to control Death. We embrace it. Aye. But rudely they demanded of me, tell us where to find Death. You are old. You must know him. Look no further, said I. He is under the great oak in the forest behind me. And that is where they went. Ooh. A strange tale. And one that lingers like a terrible dream. Is this the great oak the old man spoke of? It must be. Death. So this is what the old man meant. But what happened here? Strangled. That is no bandit's work. I bet you it was him. Killed by poison. No sign of a struggle. He must have taken it unknowingly. Food and ale. But why make a camp here if they were searching for death, as the old man said? By his pallor, I would say poison took this one's life. The one was strangled was into a poison. For, Silver. No doubt this played some part in this sorry scene. Three men found hidden treasure beneath the tree. They made camp and decided how to split the prize. Two of them turned on the third. But he was one step ahead of them and had already poisoned their ale. <laughs> so the glister of silver drove these greedy fools to murder. It seems they found death after all. Or death found them. That's kind of a wacky scenario that they came up with there. Two of them killed one, but he already poisoned their foods. They all died. I like it. Um, yeah, let's just go straight at it. Okay. Some pops up on the way, some pops up on the way, but as of right now, we should be able to just hit main story. Don't look like anything's closer. Go talk to Basm, huh? The boy. make a distinction between faith and understanding. What I mean to say is faith is paramount. 
Yes. For without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, that is too simplistic. Or the priest whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor. And I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. So what of the Joy Kanga Fulke? In your message, you said you tracked her to Kent. She is here somewhere. And as of last month, Sigurd was with her. But there is no guarantee this will be the case tomorrow. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone. Not with a prisoner in tow. So... Where to begin? I've made a friend, Abbot Cunibert, full of pious fire, but with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come, I will introduce you, and we'll hear the full tale together. The Instruments of the Ancients. Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basim? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty, the Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we've met, you sound more like you're a princess than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of... How should I say? Deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition. But it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is... someone special. Important. And I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. Speak your terms plainly, Abbot. I will decide if the bargain is worth my time. Ah! Your wolf shows its teeth, Basim. Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which Thane has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him, before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the Chosen Man? The King's Emissary. 
sent with a letter of congratulations to the new Elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the Thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. Your king will not be happy, his church meddling in his politics. Does this not delight you, Eivor? A chance to defy Alfred? I am God's humble shepherd, sent to protect his lambs. If Kent's new elderman is a wolf, I would blunt his claws. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the king's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the Elderman's name. You find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenston has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you at Fulkenston. All right. Go uh, take a look at some of this stuff, huh? These churches always have, if they have, um, like, wealth in them, it's always a drop chest or something. I got it. It's all bad. One down. How the fuck we get down there, I do not know. And one in here. Huh? What? Can open that door? No way. Fuck. What? I can't open this damn door. Really? Are you sure? Are you sure? Have to go from above. This makes any sense. None of these are breakable. I need your eyes, my friend. So that's how we get the one below. Actually, right there. Do we have to... Uh, the other side? That is the play! I think. We'll see. Yeah, that's definitely... Cool. A uh, secret ale recipe. The secret ingredient to our famous ale's smooth flavor and tender aroma is using fresh silphium in the mix. The yellow flower has something St. Adrian himself brought from his birthplace of Africa, along with this ancient recipe. It is also rumored to have some contraceptive effects, but use this method at your own. We love mixing, you know, contraceptives. Oh. Never goes poorly. Can I get out of this door? It's so con why it's like a normal door and you can back. Alright. So go ahead and this thing. A guilty pleasure, those stupid monks that have no idea what I've been smuggling, that I have been smuggling their precious ale out of the priory and selling it to the locals for double. And all right under their noses. Men of God, idiots of nothing. 
or like. Ha, ah, that's a good one. I could tell. Kunark, if or Kunark, I, I forgot how you pronounce his name. Um, if he gets his sozzled self here before sundown, maybe I will have a couple of flags. Oh, there's a This guy was ripping him off. Interesting. Alright, let us can grab that wealth now, and then we can hit the, uh, the sink point. Okay, what is next? I kind of want to swoop up here. Fortress, so we're probably going to hit this at some point. But I kind of want to go boom, boom, boom. But I feel like this is a blockade, so we're going to have to do this as part of the story, mate. I think we just make our way down. We go boom, we hit these two, do this raid, and then we go find out our full K. In secret hour. I mean, we can go hit this bandit camp at some point too, but that can always wait as well. I think that is our plan. So let's look at our skills. We got two more. We've been working our way to this guy. So Edun's heart draw upon the vitality of Edun. Passively regenerate recent health loss after a short delay. So that's pretty big, honestly. I like it. Longship brace was oh, we don't need it. Offhand free. I feel like this is better for like the roguelike DLC, so we don't want that. Uh, killing an enemy restores some health if you are at low health and have no rations. I mean, it's not bad, but we don't seem to be running into that problem ever. Uh, lipo stuff, dual swapping. I think kind of done with bear stuff for now. All right, we don't need. Oh. Deals damage to attack. Let's do that one. We can go here and mark our way down to very damage one. Take a look at the ability that we grabbed earlier. Level two. Look stun damage with large radius. That's kind of hot. I like it. Uh, so we're going to continue here for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day, night, whatever it is. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.